on Would I Lie to You? Stand up, Jimmy Carr. Word up, Jerry Christian. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing them tonight, Birmingham Beauty, Jamelia. On comic duty, Marcus Brigstock. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And here's your host, Rob Brydon. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that prides itself on being a liar's paradise. <laughs> According to scientists, certain people are able to tell at a glance whether someone is lying or not. They call these individuals women. <laughs> and the very first lie was told by Adam and Eve when they denied eating the apple in the Garden of Eden. The cost of eating the apple, an existence of pain and mortality. Still, slightly less than a Waitrose pack of four organic pippins. <laughs> And so to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sift the fact from the fiction. And, Jimmy, your first up All right. is revealing. <clears throat> Prince Philip told me I was a funny-looking fellow when I was a ball boy at Wimbledon. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> what, uh, what year was this? Oh, I was about 12 or 13, about 84, maybe? Something like that, ages ago. How did you get into being a ball boy? How did I get into it? Well, I just psyched myself up. <laughs> so I balls to be, yeah! I, just, I love it, man. Okay. How does the system of oh, selecting I was in, ball boys work? And I was in a tennis manage? club uh, in my sort of local village and I used to play tennis and there was a, uh, a lottery thing and you could go along and two people from every tennis club went along. Yeah, I, I thought they were from sort of schools around the Wimbledon area. That's what I thought. Where were you at school, Jimmy? The Wimbledon area. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's, he's really foxed us there. Yeah. <laughs> and you were lined up, all the ball boys and ball girls. Yeah, it was after the, the women's final. Everyone's lined up, like who, hundreds which, of us. Which final? Who, who, who had played? It was years ago. It was the Ivan Lendl kind of era. She, he's woman. unlikely to make the women's <laughs> final. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who was um, Prince Philip there with? I think it's the Duke and Duchess of Kent or something. I don't really know the royals well, that well. Well, that's the thing. It's usually the Duke and Duchess of Kent that do all the Wimbledon yeah, stuff, yeah. rather than Prince Philip, who's got more important sporting events to go and be racist at. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're a ball by Wimbledon, but I just don't think... I don't think Prince Philip often turns up to Wimbledon. He, he, he does. He does, yeah. actually. He told me I was a fun-looking fellow when I was there, so... Yeah, yeah, no... <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's how I know that, yeah. That's a clincher, though. Um, do you have any, any concept of what particular aspect of your demeanour that he found Funny looking. I, I can answer this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all have a go. We'll start with it. We'll go around like that. What's funny about my massive head? <laughs> Did you, do you think you frightened the prince with your appearance? Is that <laughs> he's actually really freaked out? <laughs> the most polite thing to say. <laughs> do you know that that joke works if you don't do that? like a ventriloquist dummy, do that again. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky monkey! <laughs> you go back in the box, <laughs> eh? Right, David, what do you reckon? Yeah, uh, well... Is he telling the truth? What do you think? It could be true because of his face, but... <laughs> Ugly. I just think. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. I just think that you've got a very unique face. No one will ever forget you. <laughs> How am I getting bullied by Jamelia? How did that happen? So, David, what's your team deciding here? I, I think it could be true. I don't know. I, I don't trust you. You're a funny-looking fella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See? You see, that's that's the crucial detail. Yeah. Um. I'm edging towards a lie. Mm. You're saying it's a lie? Mm. Yeah. OK. Jimmy Carr. Well, I can tell you, it is... a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Uh, Prince Philip didn't tell Jimmy he was a funny-looking fellow at Wimbledon. What a moment. Perhaps the funniest man in Britain, known for his off-colour material, finally getting to meet Jimmy Carr. <laughs> <laughs> Jamelia, you're next. OK. Um... I once stole some toilet paper from George Michael's house. 
Lee? <laughs> was it new or used? <laughs> was it beside the bed on the floor crumpled up or was it <laughs> from a roll? I'm amazed he has toilet paper in his house because he's normally at the gents in the park. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was in his house. It, it was in, in the toilet, not in the toilet, like, on the roll. Just, what, what were you doing at George's house? Um, it was a party. I think it was his birthday. You were, were, were any of his relatives there? there you, you think it might well, I mean, what was the occasion? Well, it was a party. What do you have parties for? Well, I have parties for all sorts of reasons. Well, it was one of those reasons. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you steal the paper? A, a memento. How much did you steal, Jamelia? What sort of quantities are we talking about here? Uh, not like the... Just like a square. One square? One square? <laughs> <laughs> and then you did this. That's not a square. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oblong. <laughs> the toilet paper squares are oblong. You know, they're referred to as squares, but they're not perfect squares at all. <laughs> they're oblong. They're definitely longer than they are wide. <laughs> You're the I'm only the... person in the world that's known as that, David. <laughs> Everyone else goes like that, just that, but not you. I say. <laughs> Excuse me, darling, pass me the ruler. I think this is actually an oblong, not technically a square. <laughs> well, how long ago was it? A few years. Three, four years? Give me some figures. Uh, about three or four years. Oh, all right, <laughs> Uh, no further questions, Your Honour. <laughs> False. <laughs> I think if you were going to steal something from George Michael's house, you would steal something a bit better than that. Hey, would you been... want a, to, to take a flat screen TV? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that, there's, there's taking a memento and then there's just being a thief. <laughs> I think you're, you're, you're edging towards saying it's a lie, I suspect. I think it's, Me and Jimmy think it's a lie, but Terry, if you're going to overrule us, then. No, I'm just going to disagree, and that way I'll look great if you're wrong. You won't look great. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, I'm on the, what about I give them your brutal quipping, not me. Oh, I'm on your team. <laughs> right, Jamelia, you're going to have a bit of brutal quipping. Go <laughs> <laughs> on, we'll say that's a lie, Jamelia. OK, so, uh, Jamelia, they're saying it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Are you telling the truth? It is true. <laughs> it's true. Jamelia did once steal some toilet paper from George Michael's house. Um, I bumped into George Michael in the toilet once. We'd never met before, but he was very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, you're next. Right. <clears throat> I worked as a podium dancer at the Ministry of Sound. Uh... <laughs> you were a podium dancer at where, sorry? At yeah. uh, the Ministry of Sound. And what does that involve? I don't, I don't say just dancing. I mean, what did you have to wear, for example? Uh, usually we'd get a, a, a phone call and, and they'd let us know if there was any colour theme. <laughs> and then at certain points in the evening, uh, w they would just gather up the, those of us who were employed to do it and put us on a podium to uh, get the crowd going. And, and what, what sort of tunes were you dancing to? This was early 90s, so, uh, you know, early 90s house music. What? Like what? Name one. Hello. Um, I, did I can't a... help you here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think the nature of that kind of music was that they were they were relatively indistinct tunes designed to create an atmosphere across the entire evening. Well, that's a stroke. But I mean, look, for, you know, <laughs> well, there is there is an easy way to tell if if he's telling the truth, oh, which is which is. Would you like to show us? Uh, not Sandra. particularly. Well, come on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm now a sort of moderately plump man in my mid-30s. It, it doesn't have quite the same impact. Oh, come on, what do you mean, moderately? <laughs> <laughs> when to when they find you? Their own people just sort of talent-spotted me. They talent-scouted you? Yeah. <laughs> Marcus, it was a, a part-time job. Now, what, yeah. what, what else were you doing? What other jobs were you doing at the time? I was working on an oil rig. Oh, cats. <laughs> <laughs> I worked, I worked for nine months on an oil rig, doing four weeks on, and in the two weeks off, I would go and do... Uh, is this like, this is like your own private flash dance? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in that area, yeah. What were you doing on the... You were welding, and then you were dancing. <laughs> <laughs> flash dance is based on your life. <laughs> So what did your oil rig friend people, did you tell them what you were doing part-time? Yeah, I used to practice on the rig. You did not. <laughs> It's just a massive podium. 
Joe Lee, what are you going to say? What do you think? Is he telling it's the truth? It's got a lot of I YMCA think... qualities, this too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> Not only do I think this is true, I think this is the most dignified and wonderful way for Marcus to come out on television. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid, in a way, and unbelievable, that it could be true as a double bluff. But no, 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 a lie as a double bluff, bluff, and he's made it mad and he's thrown the oil rig thing in, which might be true to go with the lie. <laughs> Can I just say, I it's a lie. Of, of the three series we've done so far, <laughs> I've never asked someone and at the end of it had less information than one of <laughs> Well, you're the team captain, <laughs> and I'm on the end now, getting quipped again by your boat. <laughs> you're like Radio 4 panel show bullies. So, I would say... <laughs> Radio 4? I've never been so happy in all my life! <laughs> Do you really think that, Terence? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you that, he's lying. Did you not see the dance move? Yeah. Did you not see his crazy... I was going to say, I didn't believe any of this, but I think Jimmy's probably... That was a move, wasn't it? So what are you going to go for, Lee? We'll say, we'll say it's true. OK, uh, Marcus, is it truth or is it a lie? It is, in fact... <laughs> true. Ah, <laughs> Jimmy Carr. <laughs> It's true. Marcus did work as a podium dancer at the Ministry of Sound. Uh, the DJ's got a lot of requests from clubbers at the Ministry, mainly, can you get that big posh bloke off the podium? <laughs> He's putting me off my ecstasy. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some amazing celebrity facts, and all our team have to do is decide whether they're true or not. Now then, Lee's team, take a look at this. This is my kind of town. Riding the express elevator to the top of one of the city's highest buildings, this is the view that nearly took my breath away. You know, it's an adventure to shop in this city. 150 market stalls display their goods whilst over them, tense traffic pounds along the elevated inner ring road. Yes, it's my kind of town. So, so long, Birmingham. He is looking at you. <laughs> so here's the related fact, then, for Lee's team. Jodie Marsh has a degree <clears throat> in golf course management from the University of Birmingham. Now, then... <laughs> when you say related fact, fact, it's not that related, is it? Well, it's Birmingham, Birmingham. I don't see. know, there's two Tally Savalas on a chest. <laughs> Stuck on one, do you know, that you can buy in the joke shop? <laughs> <laughs> what was famous about Jodie Marsh was that hers were actually real. Yeah, she's had an ongoing spat with uh, with Jordan over the fact that Jordan's had surgery and she hasn't. Yeah, because well, I've, met, I've met both of them. Have you? Mm. Well, I mean, both, just Jodie Marsh. <laughs> 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 and uh, I kind of had a quick, you know... <laughs> yeah. real, yeah. You can't help looking, can you? <laughs> to be honest, Jodie Marsh strikes me as someone who wouldn't particularly mind people looking. You know. She's, she's, <laughs> she's, oh, she's going to be a bit cool she gets massively know. offended. Turns up like that and someone looks at her tits and she goes, how dare you? <laughs> actually, you know, I, I'm actually very skilled in golf course management. <laughs> what do you have to do to get taken seriously <laughs> as a woman? Why would she do a course on golf course management? Well, she's a, she plays golf and her love of the game comes from her grandfather, Jasper Marsh, who was actually a professional golfer. The University of Birmingham, is that... Did it used to be a polytechnic, or was it one of the I ones that used to be a 24-hour garage? <laughs> <laughs> I think, to be fair, I think, you, the, I think the University of Birmingham is a proper one. It's a proper yeah. university. Uh, Jody wrote her dissertation on the placement of bunkers on Lynx courses. <laughs> She had to study... No, she didn't! Come on, Rob, you're pushing your luck now. <laughs> what are you going to say on this one? What do you think? I, I can't imagine she's got a golf course management from the University of Birmingham. Terry? I'm going to say it's a lie. OK. Well, I think it might be true. <laughs> <laughs> Terry's off again. <laughs> well, either way, I'll end up being ridiculed by my own team. Um, what are you writing down there? It's a letter to points of view to complain about this show. <laughs> So, you're saying it's a lie? We'll say it's a lie. You say it's a lie. OK, well, it's actually a lie. See, see. Uh, yeah, when we all agree, you see. When we all agree. Jodie Marsh does not have a degree in golf course management from the University of Birmingham. 
Golf course management is a taxing degree. You learn all about golf course design, upkeep, groundsmanship, and then after lunch you get a certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Which means at the end of that round, it's David's team in the lead with three points. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Steve. <laughs> So, oh, Terry, what is Steve to you? Uh, this is my mate Steve, and uh, we were actually questioned by police who mistook us both for jewel thieves. <laughs> right? That sounds incredibly plausible. Uh, Lee, <laughs> perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Steve. This is Steve. We own a greyhound together that's come last in every race. <laughs> And finally, Jimmy, what's your connection with uh, Steve? Uh, this is Steve. We were at primary school together. I didn't see each other for 20 years and then uh, met up in a hotel when he brought me room service. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. You call it room service. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? I think you're all claiming to be friends with him. I want to see, like, a real connection. So if you could all just give him a hug, I want to see if there's a, you know... <laughs> See if I hug this man like I own a greyhound with him. No, no, no. If he's your friend, if you own something with him. That's it. Okay. This is how we hug. We got that issue usually. Hey. How are you, little fella? <laughs> <laughs> hey, get off. I'm trying to get off with him. That's how we hug. That's realistic. Is my mate alone? Hey, look, mate. All right, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just turn around? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Which, uh, which hotel was this, Jimmy, where...? Uh... Uh, it was the Lowry in Manchester. The Lowry. That is a hotel in that Manchester. That is a hotel in Manchester, yes. yes. Yeah. He's the night duty manager there. So he's, you know, he's... You know. He knew you were staying in the hotel and brought your room service up in order to renew to your acquaintance. Yes, and yes. I recognised him immediately and, you know... And did you go, oh, my God, Steve? Yeah, I, I mean, he really hasn't changed that much. Have you remained friends with him since that? Yeah, I stay in the same hotel quite a lot when it, whenever. Oh, I'm... so you only see him when he comes to the, no, when you go to the yeah. hotel. No, literally. Yeah, that's fine. Well, he lives in Manchester. I live in London, friend. so we see each other. He's not your friend, then. What do you want me to do? Take him to the zoo? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Lee, what's the name? What's the name of the greyhound you have with him? It's called Bally Regan. Um, and how many times has Bally Regan raced? Six times. And has always come last. Always come absolutely last. We put him in too high a grade. That's the problem. And where's where's Bally Regan uh, raced? Wimbledon. Right. <laughs> so where where does he live? Wimbledon. There are most of the dogs that run at Wimbledon are trained in Wimbledon. Right. So he lives he lives at uh, what a, a kennels. In, no, he lives at the Trust House Forty. Where do you think he lives? <laughs> Dog tracks <coughs> have adjacent kennels. They do. They're Bally very Regan attractive. lives in the adjacent kennels. They, they, trainers right. live around Ooh, dog right. tracks. So right. you've got in trouble now. Why, David why? in dog racing, he knows everything about yeah. it. Yeah. If there's one thing, listen, if there's one thing I'm going to always beat David on, it's dog racing. I'm often down at Waltham Stow with me, wouldn't buy. Uh, what? <laughs> Run, you little bastard, or I'll shoot so how you. How much is it? How much is it? Uh, Where are the it... pheasants? There's no bloody pheasants. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. We'll never catch the fox at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Pheasants? Dogs? Fox? I mean, what sort of a menagerie do you imagine oh, you... I would be imagining? I imagine you would imagine... I'm in my that... castle <laughs> with ten different sorts of vaguely posh animal, all fighting each other, then I kill a servant and have sex with the wall. That's yes! your aroma. That's who you are. <laughs> right. Um, how much does it cost to kennel Bally Regan? It costs £35 a week. So why do you share him? Are you... Is it a credit crunch? <laughs> <laughs> um, because it was Steve's idea. So, Terry, how did you get to know Steve? Just being out and about, you know, drinking and what have you. So you met him in a pub? He was a stranger in a pub, you got talking, you're out, out and about, you know... Out and, and about, and you yeah, meet exactly. him. Yeah. You're out and about on a friend-finding mission. <laughs> can you be my friend? Yes. OK, can you, can, you, um, can you tell us the actual situation? Why did the police think that you were a jewel thief? They, they just thought we were sort of dressed like the description 
of um... stripy top. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, it was it was in the city centre, and um, what is it? We're walking down the road. Next thing you know, these four police cars pull up, and hang on, city centre, Manchester pedestrianised, mate. You should know that. <laughs> what, they pull up in police trams. <laughs> So we were, walk, we were walking down this road in the city centre, right, and four police cars pulled up. Got out and walked. And they got, they got out. <laughs> and About three miles. <laughs> and they, they, and they, they just said that we fitted the description of these guys just carried out a robbery on a, jewel, on a jewellers. Right, we need an answer. So, David's team. Uh, is Steve Terry's partner in crime, Lee's partner in a dog, or Jimmy's <laughs> primary school pal. Okay, can I can I rule Terry out at this stage? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I'm happy to rule and Terry I out. And I do at this think stage. Steve looks too well groomed to be from Manchester. Jimmy, everyone, come on. Another thing as well, Lee. I think you're way too successful to have bought half a dog. I think you just buy your own greyhound. <laughs> just, I think it's Jimmy. You think it's Jimmy? I think it's greyhound. I think I'm edging towards Jimmy it's because I Jimmy. think Jimmy looked a little bit put upon when when you were sort of having a go at what you know what a essentially bad friend he is. <laughs> <laughs> you're very well, it's all for a quick sandwich in a hotel bar, but, you know, I've got gigs and stuff, yeah. so... <laughs> That's neat, isn't it? Yeah, catch you next time I'm passing through town. So, David, time um, to decide. Well, I think we'll go with the majority decision, which is that we you're think saying it's, it's, it's Jimmy. Jimmy. OK, well, Steve, uh, would you like to reveal your true identity? Yeah, the truth is, uh, me and Terry were mistaken as jewel thieves. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Steve is Terry's mate, and they were questioned by the police who mistook them for jewel thieves. Was it a pedestrianised area? Uh, no, it was in Derby, actually, not Manchester. <laughs> you liar. No, I just said a city centre. He said Manchester. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Rise, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. Now, the scores are tied, so there's everything to play for, and we start with... Uh, David. I read 1984 from cover to cover in W.H. Smith, so I didn't have to buy a copy. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, do you believe that? When was this? It was, uh, I'd say, 1992. <laughs> so, <laughs> eight years after it came out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you knock on the door at 8.30 as they opened and you were in there till five? Oh, this is good. <laughs> Or did you pop in and read a no, bit of time? I read it in a in a, uh, a series of of lunch times. Did you find that later on in the afternoon you were really really hungry? Uh, <laughs> I, I, grabbed, I grabbed a sandwich as well. Oh, you were you what, were eating what? and turning at the same. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you can't you can't eat sandwiches in W. H. Smith, you barbarian. <laughs> What was the name of Winston's girlfriend in 1984? It's uh, Julia, as in do it to Julia, isn't it? Yes, I think. <laughs> what, uh, what were you doing for a living in 1992? I, I, was, I was working uh, at a publisher's. Was it really badly paid? It was quite badly paid, but, I, you know, I dare say I could have stretched to a copy, actually. Why didn't you? Because I, I quite like the... the you routine. like the danger! <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm looking at the W.A. Smith and I ain't paying for it. Technically, it's a type of shoplifting, but with intellectual property. You're stealing thoughts. It's very 1984 in and of itself. I like it. Thank you. So, I don't know, what do we think? Well, in 1992, I was having it large, he was podium dancing, and he was reading bleeding books in his lunchtime. He is weird enough to have done it. Let me ask you a question. What were you having that was so large? Everything. Chip, smoke, shake the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, time for a guess. True. You're saying true. You're saying it's a lie. Lie. Who do I trust the most? <laughs> <laughs> There's never been a jewel thief from Manchester who happened to get off. No, I wasn't a jewel thief, was I? Yeah, definitely. Stick to that story. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll go with Terry and say that's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie? OK, uh, David, is it a lie or were you telling the truth? It is a lie. Ah, well done. <laughs> it was a lie. Of course, the novel 1984 is where the term Big Brother comes from. The protagonist, Winston Smith, tries to overthrow a fascist regime by sitting in a room with Ulrika and the little one from Austin Powers. <laughs> Next. <coughs> oh, Terry Christian. Possession. OK, there's Possession. a box under the desk, if you'd like to uh, bring it up and read out the card therein. Well, this is uh, some of my hair collection. <laughs> <laughs> Gathered from guests who appeared on the word. <laughs> Rod Hull and Emu. <laughs> MC Hammer. <laughs> and uh, Kurt Cobain's hair. All right, there we are. Uh, where see. did you manage to get this hair from? I would ask the makeup women to take it off the brush. So they were brushing Emu. Well. <laughs> Do, it just it kind of sheds. <laughs> Could, would sorts, you mind if I had a look? I'd quite like to see um, Come over. some of MC Hammer's little curlies in a regal packet. <laughs> that phrase has never been said in the history of that. <laughs> well, be careful, cos there's only... It's what are you smelling <laughs> for? Smelling it smells like heroin. <laughs> <laughs> that's... That's never Rod Hull's hair. Look at that. That's not even real hair. Oh, look at MC Hammers in a little baggy in it. Oi, don't open it. <laughs> That's never MC Hammers hair, I'm telling you. Have a look at that. That's not MC Hammers hair. I know MC Hammers this hair. This is like a really low-budget CSI. Needs to do a little pot. Now it's turned into Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I can see you actually. I would have that insured for two, maybe three pence. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to you know what it's, it's, it's for? I, it's it's tricky. Do you know the thing that really is most convincing is that this is definitely an old cigarette packet. I think I, it's a big, I, hairy lie. But, but now he's, he's doing oh, that smile. Yeah, he's I, looking smart I now. hate this game. <laughs> I think we're going to say lie, aren't we? It's a lie. I'll so. agree. I'll agree. Right. You're saying it's a lie. OK, uh, Terry, is it truth or is it a lie? Get your hair, baby. Lie. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's it. That noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show and I can reveal that David's team have four points, but Lee's team have romped to victory with six points. Oh. <laughs> that it's not just a team game. And my individual liar of the week this week is Terry Christian. <laughs> Terry, you can, you can put the award on your award shelf, or, as it's currently known, your shelf. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>
morning. Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where barefaced lying is actively encouraged. Experts say that if you suspect your spouse is lying, you should keep a diary of what they claim they've been doing. Or you can turn a blind eye and that way you get to keep the house and still see your children. <laughs> <laughs> and it's claimed women in their 30s are the most likely to lie on their CVs, or as they call themselves on their CVs, women in their late 20s. <laughs> And so to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort out the truth from the lies. And Claudia is first up. OK. Oh. I, um... <laughs> Good. I once put nail polish remover in my fish tank to give my goldfish more energy. Ladies team, um, quiz her relentlessly. What, when was this? I was small. I was five, six when I had goldfish. They were lovely, sweet things. What happened ha to the goldfish? They were fine. They, they were fine. They survived? Yes. I didn't put the whole bottle in. I just put a tiny, just like a little bit, just to give them a bit more pizzazz. I should say at this point to people who might be watching at home or, or just in Dixon's window... <laughs> <are> that... <laughs> well, my... ..that we don't encourage interfering with fish in any <laughs> way. How many goldfish did you have? I had two. Two goldfish. Did, what were they called? Um, rabbit and cat. <laughs> <laughs> Is, what was your, was your, your, cat, was your cat, cat called dog? <laughs> no, no, no. Was your I dog did... called dad? I was. I was... <laughs> no, I was... <laughs> okay, why did you think it would give them energy? Because I just thought I thought they were looking a bit sleepy, and they were never really doing uh, enough hoo ha. Mm -hmm. So I put it in a bridge, and what you want them to do is play hide and seek and hide under the bridge, and, and then come up and go weave through the 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 the, the green, the pond life, the water, the plants. Yes. Um... <laughs> do you think David Attenborough's job is threatened by you? <laughs> Is, is when you put when you buy freshly cut flowers, they often say put in an aspirin or some nail polish remover, and it will just make them chop for whoa, longer. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I've never heard that. I've heard aspirin, but I've not... never. Why would you give I've aspirin to flowers? It's because they got a headache. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, it's, their, it's their feet that are hurting, surely. <laughs> so that's when you see a bunch of flowers, I've you think that. they're silently going, my feet. Well, <laughs> What she said is, where the hell are my feet? My ankles well, are killing. As, you, as, you, as you'd know if you're an amputee, you can still get an itch in the bit of you that's been cut off. You're going to have to work on your catchphrases, David. <laughs> You've heard the story. Um, I know what I think. I can't share that with you because I have to remain impartial. Do you but know? I know. Do you know? We've never, we've never asked Rob this, but what do yeah. you think, Rob? I think Claudia needs 24-hour care. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, to return to what we were yes. concerned with a moment earlier. I don't know. I, I oh, can I imagine know. a child doing something like that. Yeah. I can't believe it would work, would it? Drive. It's a distraction. It broke up. Slapping around that big crazy... Right. Well, then it worked, didn't it? It did work. It did have more energy. I'm dying! I'm dying! Did they? Yeah. 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 So what we going for, though? Well, I think it's a lie. What do you think? It's a lie. I will, and I'll go with my team and say that it's a lie. Saying it's a lie? OK. Claudia Winkleman. Yes. True or false? It is, in fact... No. <laughs> yes, it was true all along. Uh, Claudia did once put nail polish remover in her fish tank to give her goldfish more energy. <laughs> that was the last time in her life that Claudia Winkleman wasted a single drop of makeup. <laughs> <laughs> So, Clive, you're next. Right. I once had my wallet stolen by a walrus. <laughs> where, where... What's the context? The context? <laughs> it, it's not that long ago, actually. I was in, uh, I was in Greenland uh, making a radio, radio programme to look at Inuit ways of dealing with criminal justice. And what was the walrus...? Doing? Like... Uh, why was he involved, this walrus? There was a sort of a... a I couldn't really call it a zoo, more than a menagerie, 
uh, sort of by the sea with a variety of animals there. And there was like a sort of tameish walrus there. I had uh, my wallet in my hand because I'd actually for once paid for something on a trip for the BBC. <laughs> now, this will be implausible, obviously. Uh, and I put oh, it there yeah, and yeah. it sort of picked it up <laughs> as though it was going to eat it or something and sort of and then dived in the water and we never got the wallet back. So. Wait, 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 wait. I have many questions. Yes. Uh, what, were you, <laughs> what were you buying in this menagerie? You've got your wallet out to what? Wait, this is just to get in. I'd taken my wallet out to pay for the... Uh, wait, the, so the walrus uh, is was, right by the entrance. It was a cross... <laughs> no, I still <laughs> have a walrus to have to That's crazy. Did you have to ring, like, the card company to say, I've had me... I've had me <laughs> have they been stolen or lost? Yes. Or sort of stolen? Yes. It, but it was a walrus, yeah. so... It was hard. <laughs> if, there is any, if there's any sort of transactions on it, it they'll probably all be under sea. <laughs> This may be a scam, for all I know, that they then dive down afterwards and... and Identity theft. Them. That's what you're worried about. A walrus... ..just walking around. Do you remember me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did it take it? I mean, what... Be... It was a sort of tame walrus, and it sort of... Could you... Could you play oh, me? Could you, me? you play... <laughs> <laughs> Right, what do you want me to do? I want to be you. Very valuable yeah. reenactment. Right, I'll be you. Uh, right, you're, just, you're just holding the wallet there, and it just went. Oh, I'm just going to knock it and then grabbed it in the album and then went into the water. Knocked it, it and then grabbed it. Well, I flipped it out. This is what I. This is what I recall happening. And did you get? Were you very badly splashed? Were you very grumpy about it, or did you I was, all? I was certainly grumpy about it. Do, do uh, yeah. I'll, I'll play you being grumpy. Yeah, yeah reenact. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, what do you think? Claudia, I'm, I say you're sceptical. When you pay for something, you put your wallet back. You don't wander around a menagerie <laughs> holding your wallet like some sort of ice cream cone. Oh, yeah. I think it's got to be a lie. And Jason? I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. So you're going to say it's a lie? We're going to say it's a lie. Saying it's a lie. OK, Clive. Uh, <laughs> It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Uh, Clive didn't once have his wallet stolen by a walrus. Uh, I once made love to a walrus, uh, Barry White. <laughs> Always gets me in the mood. <laughs> Miranda is up next. Miranda, reveal all. One of my best friends at school was a little man I'd made from a slice of toast that I always kept in my bag. <laughs> OK. Yes, true. <laughs> Next question. What was his name? Tim. Tim Toast. In the toast mug. How did you make him? Uh, I cut him. I cut, actually cut, I actually With figured scissors. in myself. Scissors I, or, I, I or a knife? <laughs> uh, scissors. Scissors, so you I... got a piece of toast, brown or white? Good question. Brown. brown toast, was he buttered? No, he wasn't buttered. <laughs> that Damn. would be stupid, David. <laughs> 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 I was thinking, really, you, make, you make yourself a piece of toast, you butter it unthinkingly before no. you say, oh, no, that was the no, one I was because... going to cut out and make a thing. <laughs> I've buttered my friend, no, but then I... my friend will be more buttery, which is... <laughs> the fats in the butter would help preserve the friend from the mould, which will otherwise develop, which is going to be the central part of my next question. But How she, long he... did Tim last before he <laughs> rotted? <laughs> and what did you feel when you saw Tim, who you'd I created, rotting? I stopped listening rotting? about ten minutes ago. <laughs> what are you asking me? I'm asking what happened about the rotting of Tim. I don't remember a rotting. How, how old Being were you when you made Tim? Seven, seven or eight. And how old were you when you stopped being interested in Tim? <laughs> uh, 29. <laughs> <laughs> and what did, he, what did he do, Tim? Did you never have an imaginary friend? He was just... This he... wasn't an imaginary friend. <laughs> well, this is a friend that just happens to be made out of a piece of toast. <laughs> <laughs> did you make him, you know, in your own image? I, do you remember designing big legs? Because I wanted him to be a fast runner like what I was. Where did Tim sleep? <laughs> In the <Tim>. toaster. <laughs> <laughs> and did you take him to bed? <laughs> Morning! <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, David's team, I think you, you've heard enough. Um, what do you think, Doria? I think it's true. I'd be very happy to make a small piece of toast for any. <laughs> I think true. I, I, I'm, I don't know, so I'm happy to go with true. Yes. You're saying it's true. We're saying it's okay, true. Okay, Miranda. Is it true or is it a lie? It is, in fact. It. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> well done.
done. It was a lie all along. Uh, one of Miranda's best friends at school was not a little man that she'd made from a slice of toast. Well, it makes sense now. <laughs> A little man who lives in a woman's handbag is both the plot of a charming children's story and grounds for committal to a psychiatric institution. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out amazing celebrity facts, and all our teams have to do is decide whether they're true or not. What could be simpler, Lee? <laughs> Take a look at this. Have you ever met Jodie Marsh? Yeah, I met her at a book signing. And um, that's clever, she wrote her own book. What do you want to do in life? Um, I'd like to be, like, just like the next Josie Marsh and be, like, famous and that. And then when I got too old to do that, I'd like to be a writer, cos I like writing. I've already started writing my autobiography and I'm dead young, but I can just carry it on. What is your book called? It's called Ups, Downs and Wishes. Why? Cos it's got, like, all the ups in my life and all the downs and all my wishes. <laughs> Is the, is the premise of that show that the people interviewed are too boring to be interviewed by humans? <laughs> so they have to use a computer, because otherwise a human interviewing them would die of boredom. Is <laughs> she not your type? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the, uh, here's the related fact, then, uh, for Lee's team. David Beckham gave a copy of his own autobiography to Nelson Mandela as a Christmas present. Now, is that true? What would Nelson Mandela do with a colouring book? <laughs> it's more like to give him a football or a shirt, though, wouldn't he, or something like that, or, or a pair of boots. But he's or... 90. He yeah. could yeah. always. Yeah. Do the boots <laughs> or the football. <laughs> can you do David Beckham? Can you do his voice? I can do that sort of thing, yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> could you do it then? Could you do it now? Could you do I'm it? doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for Nelson Mandela's 90th birthday in 2008, David Beckham sent this message. Mr Mandela, I, I won't do, I'll, I'll do it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do it as Sean Connery. Um, <laughs> do it as Ronnie Corbett or Terry Wogan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Terry Corbett! Terry Wogan. <laughs> do Frank Spencer! Do <laughs> <laughs> the message went like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably safest tell us first who it is, you know, and then we'll know. <laughs> no, no, just, uh, I'm not going to say no. who it is. Yeah. Okay. I'll just say he's a bit of a tit, OK? And then you go with it. Oh. <laughs> Mr Mandela, happy 90th birthday. <laughs> Sorry I can't be with you, but um, I'm sure you'll have an amazing day. <laughs> Lee's team, what's your guess? I think it's, it's not true. I think he gave him something else, but I, I don't know why I say that. I, I reckon that's true. Truth, lie. <laughs> I'm going to say... <laughs> true. You're saying it's true? <laughs> it's still gripping no. the desk, man. For goodness sake. <laughs> it's all right. It's a panel game. That's not the desk. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying true. Yes, it is true. Yay! <laughs> David Beckham did give a copy of his own autobiography to Nelson Mandela as a Christmas present, as if the man hadn't suffered enough. <laughs> Not so much a long walk to freedom, more a short walk to the bin. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have two points and Lee's team have two points. round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Owen. <laughs> so, Miranda Hart, what is Owen to you? This is Owen. And he stopped me attending his yoga classes because I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> right. Uh, Lee. This is Owen. He's a professional juggler and he's teaching me to juggle. <laughs> yeah. right. And Clive, how do you know Owen? He is uh, my builder and, in fact, he was working on my roof once and fell through it while I was watching television. My word. Oh. All right. David, where do you want to start? Right, Clive, um, <laughs> what was on TV? What was on TV? I'm afraid to say it was Richard and Judy. 
Uh, and this one really didn't embarrass me. It was, da it was daytime telly. Owen, I've known for quite a while, he's done a lot of building work for me and he used to make fun of the fact that sometimes I, I was at home uh, and I would say, well, I explain I was working. And sometimes the television would go on, I have to explain, oh, well, I'm watching the television because I'm researching something. So as, as he came through the ceiling, you shouted, there's an item on Inwit Justice! Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and what was he doing on your roof? My roof is a nightmare. So I've had mm. endless time with builders on the roof, including Owen. Uh, first it was his father. And he his... fell through. <laughs> no, no, no. no but, uh... And his father before him, and his father before him. <laughs> he was pulling up the lead or the zinc that forms the valley gutter and was standing on the slates, and unfortunately, uh, that created a hole and his legs came through, and then eventually, of course, brought down the whole ceiling eventually. Okay, uh, Lee. Lee. Yes. Um, so you're looking to develop more um, showbiz skills. Correct. <laughs> what made you think juggling? My four year old son yeah. went to a children's party and uh, said, I, I saw a juggler today. I wish you could juggle, Daddy. <laughs> oh. And I looked into that little boy's eyes and I. <laughs> I said, son. Uh. <laughs> I said, son, if you want to see your old daddy juggling, you know. So, how many lessons have you had? Well, I look over at Rob and I see that he's got balls on his desk. And I would, uh, thank you. <laughs> what do that one? Oh. Oh, oh four. Well, what, what, what about the seven clubs? Why did I do that, Rob? <laughs> Two lessons. Surely you ought to get Owen to do the juggling. Him? He's a builder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've only had two lessons, so I'm just learning the basics at the moment. Oh, oh that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I admit I'm only really yeah, yeah, yeah. going to just learn the hand. Right? Are you... <laughs> the, he's not a very good teacher. <laughs> I mean, basically, we've learned absolutely nothing from that, because if Lee did know how to juggle it, he would not now be juggling as well as he could. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> so what about Miranda's claim? Okay. What's so funny about yoga? A couple uh, joined our class, and um, they just got engaged, and they wanted to tone pre-wedding, and they were very earnest. And that's when it was started going wrong, because they, they were what made me laugh a lot. What, what was it that they did that was...? Well, the first thing was that when they did positions, they looked into each other's eyes quite earnestly, and I found that very funny. Right. <laughs> and then another, another time, um, oh, we were doing the sun salutations. I don't know if you're aware of yoga. Mm -hmm. no. And Owen said, and into downward dog, which was always amusing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman did the biggest fart. <laughs> I would have got myself together, I think, there, but... The fiancé, he said very earnestly, and there she blows. <laughs> we know! <laughs> OK, we need an answer. Uh, oh. So David's team is Owen, Miranda's ex-yoga teacher, Lee's juggling coach, or Clive's tumbling tradesman? I don't believe that Lee no. would just have juggling lessons just so he could look his son in the eye. <laughs> I believe, completely believe, about yeah. Clive's roof. Is there That's... many male yoga teachers? Oh, <laughs> That's the other one yeah, I'm going to there. there. It seems a little bit of a, like a girl's job. It's like job. the first time you've ever been out of the north. No, it does. <laughs> it's a sort of thing, it's because it sounds to me like homosexuals. <laughs> You always do this when I'm on the show. You're from the north. <laughs> I thought I was from the north till I met you. <laughs> OK, I do need an answer, chaps. Well, shall we go with Clive, then? I think yeah. so. Yeah. So, you think that it's a Clive's roofer, uh, Owen. Would you like to reveal your true identity? I am actually a professional juggler and I've been teaching oh! you. <laughs> The kid side of things. The, the, My the... kid genuinely went to a birthday party and came home and said, uh, I saw a juggler. It was the best thing I've ever seen. I wish you could do juggling, Daddy. Aww. Oh. That's the kind of man I am, girls. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone's up for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, when you hear things like that, it just adds to the mystery of why the social services took them away, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, Owen is teaching Lee to juggle. Uh, thank you very much, Owen. Thank you.
Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but, of course, against the clock. Starting with... <coughs> uh, it's you, David. I was thrown out of a nightclub for refusing to stop dancing on a table. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. What was the name of the nightclub? It was called Cindy's. Cindy's. <laughs> <laughs> this has taken on a whole new... <laughs> sort of... David couldn't think of a name and went, think of your dolls. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Cindy's. <laughs> Why were you on the table? What was the occasion? It was just... Uh, there was just a group of us went to this nightclub, uh, you know, on a Saturday night, I think, and got very pissed. When they said, please stop, yeah. what did you say back? What Hammer time! I think I was sort of, if you can imagine this, <laughs> in a slightly drunken state of self-righteousness. <laughs> And I sort of thought I wasn't doing any harm. What, uh, what kind of music were you into, then? <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever was on. What? A quite fast what fox drop? What I mean, music? What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this is going at some speed. I'm getting on the table. <laughs> no, it was, you know, it was... It was, it was pop music. When they was play pop music? <laughs> music is yeah. totally legitimate. It is not in the same category as talking about the hit parade. <laughs> I can say pop music without turning to tweed. <laughs> well, it's time to, to reach a decision here. Miranda, what is our decision? Well, I've seen David drunk many times, but I've never seen him dance before. So you're thinking it's a lie? I think yeah. it's a lie. It so uh, has to be a lie. It's got to be a lie. I, I thought it was a lie when he said, once in a nightclub, I, yes, I my shutters yeah. went down. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying it's a lie. Uh, David, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <clears throat> it's uh, Jason. Oh. All right. I... I once put out a fire using my neighbour's milk. <laughs> yeah, these team? Is that possible? Was it a... was it a very small fire? Um, it was... it was, you know, a fire... Say, say for example, that desk was on fire. It'd be about, it was about that big. And it wasn't just one neighbour's, it was... it was about 15 neighbours. 15 neighbours? What? <laughs> what time of day was this? In the morning, when the milk came. <laughs> Well, one of your neighbours were up early enough to bring the milk. It was a Saturday. It was a Saturday. Because <laughs> it's a Saturday, you have to lie in and you get double milk because of the Sunday, you know. So what was on fire, please? It was just on the, like a, on like a field. There was like some dried grass. Just and... a bonfire then. <laughs> well, it, no, it just sort of. We just thought, oh look at that dried grass. Let's set it on fire. And you know that's what you do when what? you're 25. And you... <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I think we were about eight or nine. But basically, you're an arsonist. You started the fire... Yes. ..and then stole some milk in order to put it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it could have just burnt out quite happily on its own. There was no need, really, to pour... Yeah, but at eight... I it mean, was eight. I've not got this knowledge of fire. I'd seen three episodes of London's Burning. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not sure that adds up, Jason. How long's London Burning been on? I think you can believe him, he's seen London's Burning. <laughs> I'm not sure London's Burning, the programme, was on. So you're disputing when London's Burning first came onto our yes, screen? Yes, yes, oh, that's it, yes. <laughs> Right, Jason was born in 1981, so he is alleging that by 1989, London's Burning was already on television. Oh, I believe 1981. him. 1981! <laughs> 1981, he looks like me uncle! <laughs> Anyway, can we get back to the story yeah, that we're yeah, just yeah, yeah. How far did you have to go to get the milk? I was a kid, I, I didn't measure it. I How mean, many, about... Well, give us a rough... Tw twelve and a half metres. About <laughs> twelve and a half metres. <laughs> twelve and a half metres. <laughs> right. Why don't you just get a knock at the door and say, quick, quick, the, the field's on fire? Because then that would be admitting yeah. that and there was a fire. Whereas in this instant, the only thing that happened was a milkman got sacked for not delivering milk. I think... <laughs> Well, just to clarify, before we say our decision, you, te you took how many bottles of milk to, to put out the fire? Um, 15 or something. Ah, 15. 15 10, well, I take you back to your earlier answer, which was 15 houses, and on a Saturday they got double milk. He's <laughs> <laughs> very fair minded. He took one pint from each. <laughs> so, what are you going to say, Lee? What, what, what are you going for here? Oh, they, they, I don't they, know now. The whole answer was delivered in such an implausible and frankly guilty-sounding <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Miranda? Uh, I think it's 
a truth. Well, Jason, where were you, where were you brought? Manchester. Yeah, you see, I was brought up around Manchester. I can imagine the bit about you saying, all right, let's go in there and set fire to a field. Believable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's a bit big. Better put it out with some milk and be good citizens. Yeah. Doesn't really sort of add up. So what are you going to plump for? You're saying the truth. Truth. You're saying a lie. Yeah. I'll go with, I'll go with Miranda and say yeah. we think that's the truth. You're saying it's the truth. OK, well, so, uh, Jason, is it, it the truth? It is a... True. Wow. Next. <laughs> Claudia Winkleman. Hey! Oh, possession. Ah, now, there's a box just behind the stage there, Claudia, if you'd like to get the box. Hold on, bear with me. <sighs> uh, take out its contents. OK. In here is my pet cat from when I was little, and my dad had her stuff for me when she died. Oh! Here she is. Oh! <laughs> Can I just pop her on the desk there, Claudia? <laughs> well, she run over. <laughs> Did you want your father to stuff your cat? No, but I was died? so devastated, I was so upset that she died. So my dad, as a present, uh, gave her to me, uh, all stuffed, and she came to my wedding. Sorry, sorry. Came to your wedding? <laughs> I think, I think Lee, not of her own accord. <laughs> Was she a bridesmaid and came down on a trolley? No, no. <laughs> Claudia, sorry, can you just remind us again how, the, how your poor little cat died? Yes, well, she got sick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you pleased with this dead Let's cat? Stuffed cat? I was very pleased because she's sort of lucky. Like, if you're anyone She's near lucky. Her... <laughs> 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 I would hate to see what happens to the unlucky one. <laughs> what are we saying? I, want this, I want this to be true because it'll be funny. Want... It'll be funny if it's true. I just, I just don't believe Claudia, even in Claudia's world, which I, <laughs> which I love. However, this is a step too far. I just yeah. don't believe. Yeah. Well, that's... <laughs> That's pretty convincing. That's... Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? She looks like a very lovely but slightly unstable woman, and I'm going to say that that's true. You're saying it's true? OK, Claudia Winkleman, is it true or is it a lie? It is indeed a lie. Oh, I what a shame. <laughs> it's a lie. Uh, it's not Claudia's pet cat that was stuffed when it died. Um, I considered having my own cat stuffed, but uh, I prefer to remember him peacefully attached to the grill of that Hyundai as it sped away. <laughs> That's what he would have wanted. <laughs> ah, and that noise signals time's up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that uh, David's team have three points, but Lee's team have romped to victory with seven. It's not just a team game, and um, my individual liar of the week is Claudia Winkleman. <laughs> yes, it, uh, it goes to show uh, being as mad as a bag full of chimps had to come in handy sooner or later. <laughs> Good night.